Hello my dear lovely students I hope you all are doing great a very warm welcome once again with chavi ma'am so all my students hope you all are ready and today we are going to start a new chapter which is breathing and exchange of gases so in these four sessions of breathing and exchange of gases we will be completing the whole chapter yes we will be discussing some questions also so let's get ready are you ready now this is a lecture number 1 now this lecture number is all about the process of breathing how the breathing happens how does our respiratory tract look like many time it is like what is respiration what is breathing and today we will be discussing the difference between these two so let's have a look it is going to be another very interesting session so two topics we are going to deal today one is respiration that what is a respiration and second is a type of respiratory organs and yes guys today we will be dealing with some questions also some pyqs okay Now, topic of today's class first of all is a respiration. So, respiration means what? Respiration means it is the oxidation of oxidation of organic organic compounds. Right. oxidation of organic compounds so there are organic compounds right and what do we do is oxidation and with the help of an oxidation what is released the energy so energy is released energy is released and the energy which is released this energy this particular energy is used for various metabolic processes metabolic processes right there is another word let's discuss that which is breathing which is breathing breathing so what is breathing breathing means exchange of gases it means exchange of gases exchange of gases so exchange of gases between what exchange of gases between a human being and an environment right so they take up the gases and they release some gases this is termed as breathing process and later on you can see that inside the body inside the body the organic substances they are being broken down these organic substances they release energy and that energy is utilized for various processes now hope the topics are clear right now i can say that respiration itself is a big word and breathing is a part of it so respiration means involvement of oxidation of organic compound so for that yes the gases are required and because of this the energy is released and that energy is utilized so we can say that respiration is or more easily in more specifically i can say breathing is a part of respiration breathing is a part of respiration right breathing is a part of respiration right so breathing in the exchange of gases and that's a respiration so hope the word which is the respiration the breathing it is clear to you now let's talk about the types of respiration let's talk about the types of respiration so respiration means organic substances they are broken down organic substances once they are broken down that means there is release of energy so there are two ways by which organic substances they are broken down one is a uh, by aerobic way and second by anaerobic way so first let's talk about aerobic respiration aerobic respiration 
aerobic respiration and second is termed as anaerobic respiration anaerobic respiration these topics they are not part of this chapter but yes some time for uh, like these topics they create confusion in students mind that what is respiration what is breathing what do you mean by anaerobic and anaerobic condition so i'm just giving you an overview so that a base should be created and later on we can build upon the process of the breathing the process of respiration so anaerobic respiration and the first one is your aerobic respiration so aerobic respiration is what aerobic respiration does what it involve oxygen it involve oxygen right and the energy which is released the atp which is released you know whenever we talk about the energy one thing that comes in our mind is a atp lots of energy is released lots of atp is released and for these cases the examples they are a lot what are these examples examples they are like a uh, normal plants itself in fact the most of the animals so the examples are most animals and plants now students let's talk about <coughs> anaerobic respiration anaerobic respiration that means breakdown in the absence of oxygen absence of oxygen now here the product is lactic acid is produced lactic acid is produced and the amount of energy which is released over here as compared to the aerobic respiration is less that means less atp is produced less atp is produced less atp is produced and in this case the examples they are like uh, some parasites for example the ascaris those forms which live inside our body right for example the tinea tinea solium like basically they are endoparasite tinea solium tapeworm the ascaris also you can take an example of ascaris so all these they are what they are endoparasite endoparasite and in fact other examples in this case are the rbc the red blood cell and yes it happens in the muscles also sometimes so all these are examples so respiration so ultimately what is happening the energy is produced and i have given you ample of examples related to it now in your syllabus in your chapter basically in your books we will be talking about the respiration occurring at various levels that means here external also respiration occur where we take in the some gases and we release some gases here at the alveoli level the exchange of gases occur then there is a transport of gases and then the cellular respiration occur so let's talk about all of these one by one <coughs> <coughs> so first of all guys what do we have is the human body so what do we do is we take up these gases there are gases right in the environment there are gases in the environment listen very carefully right now these gases from the environment they reach up to where they reach up to the lungs or basically the alveoli alveoli right they reaches up to the alveoli so alveoli is what alveoli you can say it's a terminal part of lungs terminal part of lungs are there where basically the exchange of gases occur now this particular process you can see the gases they travel 
so they enter from the nose then they enter into the trachea and further they end up in the alveoli this is termed as a first respiration so first respiration this is a external respiration what is the name given to this the external respiration external respiration external respiration right externally respiration is happening external respiration hope this point is clear first point now the second one is alveoli or the part of the lung now if they have reached up to the lungs now what will happen buddies from here from the alveoli gases will enter in blood will enter in blood right and here the process which is involved is termed as diffusion so by which process does this occur the diffusion diffusion right so i would like to show you how these happens if you look at these alveoli this is how these alveoli look like and these blood supply the blood supply in them is like this that means they are in closely proximate with one another now what happens is these gases specifically the oxygen goes like this this is oxygen goes like this and similarly the carbon dioxide goes like this here basically i'm talking about the gases here means the oxygen they will enter into the blood so this is a blood right this is a blood supply <coughs> right so this is how they they enter over here clear now this particular process is termed as internal respiration sorry ha huh, yes internal respiration external respiration then internal respiration now let's proceed further now what will happen now there is another process involved now these gases they will travel right now these gases they will travel in blood gases specifically oxygen travel in blood in blood and reach up to each and every tissue of the body they reach up to each and every tissue of the body now this is going to happen they are going to reach up to each and every body tissue now what will happen buddies look at this diagram what will happen next there is a blood vessel right and they will form capillaries kind of things <coughs> sorry <coughs> i'm sorry guys now this is how the body cells are present the body cells are present now what will happen now these gases they are now going to travel to the body tissue here also diffusion occur here also diffusion occur now what is the next step let's write about the next step here i am writing diffusion of again this is number 2 diffusion diffusion of gases specifically oxygen again in body tissues in body tissues now they will reach up to the body tissue they will reach up to the each and every body tissue now here in the body tissue what will happen these gases they will be utilized will be utilized and atp is produced 
ATP is produced. Now this is termed as your cellular respiration. What is the name given to this? The third one, cellular respiration. So these are the three words which I will be using a lot in this chapter. I just want that you guys should be clear of these topics. So external respiration, internal respiration and the next one we have is a cellular uh, respiration. Hope it is clear. So this is all about the respiration. Here in this chapter, a word is mentioned which is termed as the breathing. So what is this breathing? Breathing is your external respiration. The external respiration which is happening, that is your breathing. So I can write it over here. This is also termed as breathing. So what we are doing is we are breathing right now also breathing everything is happening in my body so we are just referring to the pro point that is breathing are clear now moving on to the next is the respiratory organs in various group of or animals different group of organism they are having different type of respiratory structures right starting from the porifera the sealant traits or your platy helminthus. Now the respiratory structure, have you, we have already done the chapter animal kingdom and we talked about the respiration in these group of or organisms also because they also need oxygen for the various processes which is happening in their body. So how do they do the exchange of gases? From the general body surface, yes. So here the respiratory structure is the general body surface general body surface this is the general body surface now next one we have is earthworm and insecta now earthworm that means with this uh, let's move on to the next phylum that is the earthworm in the case of the earthworm also the moist cuticle is there now this is a moist cuticle moist cuticle you know what is the function of this moist cuticle moist cuticle is the one which helps in the process of respiration respiration means exchange of gases so here also the exchange of gases occurs through the general body surface that means gases they will be taken up and the carbon dioxide they will be released like this so this is how the exchange of gases occur in annelids <coughs> one second guys Okay, now, earthworm, is it done? Now let's talk about the insecta. So insect, that means I'm talking about the arthropods. So in the arthropod, there is one class which is termed as insecta. Here we are talking about the phylum arthropoda. In phylum arthropoda, one class is there, which is, you all know, insect. Insects, they are having a well-developed tracheal system. This you must have studied in the chapter structure organization, the cockroach, right? So what do they have is the tracheal system. The tracheal system. And this tracheal system helps in exchange of gases. You can see some tubes are there. Some network of tubes are there which are spread throughout the body. And these tubes, these fine tubes are in touch with each and every uh, body cell. And they help in the exchange of gases. They give oxygen and they take up the carbon dioxide. Clear? Now next, let's talk about the mollusk. So before talking about the mollusk, let's talk some more about the uh, arthropods. Now there are some arthropods which are having gills, right? For example, I can take an example of this is very important. The limulus. Limulus. Limulus is a king crab and this limulus they are having the book gills. What do they have is the book gills. What do they have is the book gills. Now let's talk about the next group of organism. Let's say the scorpion. Or you can take an example of the spider. They are having a separate kind of respiratory system which is termed as book lungs. 
I'll tell you why they are termed uh, 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 like this, book lungs. So I'm talking about the arthropods only. So here in the uh, limulus, you will find book gills. So book gills are the lamellae, like say books, they are having sheets, like pages are there. Similarly, these gills, they are having a lamellae. They look like books, uh, the <coughs> pages of a books. So that is the reason name is given as the book gills, a paired structure they have. Similarly, the scorpion, the spider, book lungs are there. So book lungs are also the structure, the lamellae structure like this. You know, they are terrestrial right and they are in touch with <coughs> the environment like this so directly they exchange gases so these are some important example again i'm telling you you have to remember the limulus which is which you all knew that's a living fossil we have discussed about this in the previous chapter and the scorpion the spider the book lungs now let's talk about the mollusk in the group mollusk you will find the tinidia are there that is a gilly gills Tinidia. Gills are there. Now, terrestrial animals, you can see in terrestrial animals, what do we find? We find the lungs are there. Right? What do we have for the respiration? We are having a proper lungs. So, lungs, in fact, lungs itself is a very complex thing, which consists of various other things, which we will be looking at now. So, here the exchange of gases occur. There is a part of the lung where the exchange of gases occur. Not in every part of the lung the exchange of gases occur. We'll be discussing about that also. Let's talk about like an example of a frog. So when we say the frog, frog do the respiration with the help of a skin also. They are having the lungs also by which the respiration occur. They can show the buccopharyngeal respiration also. Frog. In fact, when we talk about the larvae of uh, uh, the frog, they are having gills. That is that gives us an idea of the evolution that they might be because they are amphibian, they, so they might be evolved from fishes. Now, the majorly in this uh, uh, chapter we ha have to discuss the breathing and exchange of gases. So, breathing and exchange of gases, the unit name is animal physiology. So, here we'll be dealing with the humans basically, the human physiologically. So, human physiology in the human physiology, we are discussing as we know the digestive system is there. So, we discuss the digestive system of a human being, similarly, the uh, human respiratory system. <coughs> Let's discuss this. Clear? In the human respiratory system, this is not a simple respiratory system. System that means various structures are present. System means various structures and various organs are there. What do we have is various organs you will find. And these organs, they function together and what do they help? They help in the gaseous exchange. Gaseous exchange. Can we live without the respiratory system? No, we cannot. Right? Each and every body cell of our body, they require oxygen. So, let's start with it. Now, first of all, let's talk about what do we have is the paired nostril. What do we have is paired nostril. Nostrils, these are the nasal openings. These are the nasal opening, right? From here, whenever we breathe, the gases, the oxygen, the carbon dioxide, they enters in our body. Uh, there's a reason why I'm telling gases. There's a reason, which you will get to know in the subsequent session. From here, the gases, they enter into the nasal cavity, nasal cavity or the nasal chamber or the chamber. It's a chamber. It's a chamber. So here it enters. From here, there, the oxygen or the gases, they enter into the nasopharynx. Nasopharynx. From nasopharynx, these gases, they enter into a common pharynx. Right? Common pharynx. From where there, these gases, they enter into the larynx part. From larynx part, the gases, they enter into the trachea. 
the trachea from trachea they enter into the bronchi bronchioles etc and etc we'll be talking about these so ultimately they enter into the lungs so this is how uh, the gases they reach up to the lungs hope this is clear now this whole system is consist of pipes right are you getting this point point they are just like a pipe structure which carries oxygen in the carbon dioxide and which ultimately reaches up to the alveoli clear now let's talk about how this whole tract is divided let's talk about it now <coughs> first of all when we talk about the human respiratory system human respiratory system so human respiratory system a tract is there like i told you one is termed as conducting tract right uh, or it constitute the conducting system so first of all we have is conducting system right a conducting tract is there conducting area right which just help in conduction so what is the function of this it helps in conduction what is the function it helps in conduction of gases of gases and heat up heat up and again moisturize the air moisturize the air right it's a conducting like a pathway is there conducting path <coughs> let's talk about it so what do we have is the paired nostril here i'm talking about a structure like this nostril from here the gases they enter into these chamber this is a nasal chamber right from nasal chamber there is a nasopharynx present here the internal nares are present i'll be labeling each of this the internal nares now from here <coughs> this is how now i'm making a diagram of a larynx trachea i'll make you understand this thing now please understand this topic now focus on uh, the diagram i'm just making a rough diagram but this diagram will make you understand each and every point now first of all what do we have buddies is the nostril these are the nostril present a paired nostril this is a nasal chamber nasal chamber so in the nasal chamber if you look at the nasal chamber nasal chamber a septum is present a nasal septum is present which divides the chamber into two different areas then we have is a previous area which is termed as the nasopharynx nasopharynx then we have these area which is termed as nares and this is the name is internal nares internal nares right now what happens next what happens next now these gases they enter they enter into a region which is termed as the pharynx this is how it look like a common passage a common passage it is a common passage like this clear 
now towards the back side you will find the esophagus is there right this is another pipe which runs which is termed as esophagus we are, we are not dealing right now with the esophagus now always remember the trachea is present in the ventral side whereas the esophagus is present towards the dorsal side so whenever we eat food so food enters into the esophagus they do not enter into the trachea so this is how it look like now over here buddies you will find this is how a glottis look like so glottis is having a flap like structure which is termed as epiglottis are you getting this point let's write so labeling i'm labeling this the opening of trachea this is termed as glottis opening opening is termed as glottis right this flap like structure this is termed as epiglottis this is termed as epiglottis are you getting this point the epiglottis is there then glottis is there and below this you will find a region which is termed as the trachea trachea now let's understand this thing in a in a uh, another better way we say the pharynx is there Phary, uh, sorry larynx a uh, region is there now we say that larynx is there so what actually a larynx is can anyone would like to tell me what is larynx now the epiglottis part this whole part from epiglottis to the glottis this is the tracheal part that is a pretracheal region and the post tracheal region till this region this is termed as the larynx upper tracheal region this is termed as a here the vocal sacs here the vocal sacs they are present what are these these are the vocal sacs are present so all these they constitute the larynx part so how i can show you if i have a bottle yeah now you can see this is a trachea what is this this is a normal trachea now this bottle suppose this uh, suppose this bottle is present like this right now here this particular hole you can see this is termed as this hole i i won't tilt it further because otherwise the water will uh, 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 go out come out so this particular hole is epiglottis here a flap like covering is present like this which is termed as a epiglottis which prevents that food should not enter into the trachea now glottis is clear and the epiglottis is clear now over here over here there is a region this whole region this is termed as the larynx region are you getting this point this whole region is termed as a larynx region and this larynx region they are having the vocal sacs and these vocal sacs which are present they basically helps in the uh, talking right so we are able to talk just because of it one second <coughs> right now let's understand let's understand so many students they get confused that ma'am what actually this larynx is so <coughs> this is again i'm making a diagram this is how it look like so below this now the trachea will start now you all know this is termed as the glottis right this is termed as the epiglottis here another region is present which is termed as supraglottis because this is above glottis supraglottis then we have is subglottis subglottis so vocal sacs are there everything they constitute the larynx so all these things they constitute the larynx so larynx is this so from now onwards hope you will not be confused now trachea is there now this trachea bifurcates at t5 right at the t5 region right you all know first we have cervical vertebra i'm talking about the thoracic vertebra thoracic vertebra so at the fifth thoracic vertebra it bifurcates right and you can see i have made a diagram like this 
you can see in the trachea some ring like structure is present now this ring like structure is not complete ring these are the partial rings present i'll show you now i'll show you wait now here this is how the rings are present guys can you see this is not present over here that means on the dorsal side like like they are present like this on the dorsal side this trachea uh, this cartilage the hyaline cartilage is not complete whereas on the ventral side it is complete so like this it is present lots of hyaline cartilage like cartilage is present and this cartilage prevents the collapse of the trachea so what do they have is let's write that also so we have the hyaline cartilage hyaline cartilage and this hyaline cartilage is what this is c shaped c shaped c shaped means not present they are not present on the dorsal side you can note this down not present on dorsal side right now it divides right it divides and what do they form is the bronchus or bronchi so we can label this as bronchi or bronchus in some books you will find the name as bronchus now these structures they further bifurcates now for each and every structure i'll be using different color now these structures they further bifurcates like this right they further bifurcates they form network of tubes they further bifurcates you can see now the first step the bifurcation this is termed as primary bronchi primary bronchi you can see it further bifurcated and what do they form is the secondary bronchi secondary bronchi and the third part now it further bifurcates it further bifurcates it is a network of branch guys right it further bifurcates you can't see it is it is going to bifurcates like this the first bifurcation now this is termed as the tertiary bronchi tertiary bronchi next we have is the next bifurcation you can see this is further bifurcated so after the further bifurcation what do we have is initial bronchioles bronchiole now this is going to further bifurcate which i'm using the another color it is going to bifurcate further and ultimately what do we have is the terminal bronchiole terminal bronchiole so this is how it look like so how will you uh, remember this conducting system or the conducting path so conducting system comp composed of what the nostrils the nasal chamber nasopharynx internal nares then pharynx the esophagus we are not talking about the esophagus then the further part the epiglottis glottis and the trachea bifurcation then it forms a bronchus primary secondary tertiary initial bronchioles and the terminal bronchioles right clear hope this conducting path is clear buddies hope you guys do not have any doubt related to this now let's talk about another important feature now the important feature is we can see hyaline cartilage see hyaline cartilage will be present here see it will be present
hyaline cartilage. So this is how a hyaline cartilage look like. I'll write this down. <sighs> hyaline. That is your C-shaped cartilage. C-shaped cartilage present till initial bronchioles. Very, very, very important question. Question is asked whether hyaline cartilage is present in terminal bronchiole. Your answer should be no. It is not present over there. So, hope this diagram is clear. Any doubt you have with this topic, right? Any doubt you have? Hope you, you guys do not have any doubt. If you have, guys, please comment in the comment section. I'll, I'll definitely comment over there. So, the conducting system or the conducting pathway is, hope it is clear. So, conducting pathway. Let's talk about the second one that is a respiratory pathway or the gaseous exchange pathway. <coughs> respiratory pathway or gaseous exchange. Now this is the area where the exchange of gases will occur. This is the area where exchange of gases will occur. Now till now we have talked about the conducting one which just conducts. It warms up, increases the temperature and also not only warms up, it you can't see the internal air, uh, sorry, in the nasal chamber. We will find uh, some structures. One second. Uh, some structures like hairs are present. Some mucus is also secreted. That is just to keep the hair, uh, the air neat and clean. That means the bacteria should not be there because ultimately they are going to enter into the lungs, which we do not want. Now the respiratory and the gaseous exchange. Now gas gaseous exchange this particular pathway. It starts with the alveolar bronchioles. See. <coughs> so look at this right we were making a structure like this and we labeled this as the terminal bronchiole terminal bronchiole so always remember terminal bronchiole was a part of the conducting system the conducting path this is not a part of the respiratory. So I'm writing this down so that you should not make this mistake. Now what happens is they further bifurcates. Right? They further bifurcates. Right? Ultimately, what do we have is the sac like structure. Like this is present. Let's label. So first of all, what do we have is alveolar bronchiole right next we have is the alveolar duct alveolar duct and the last we have is alveoli alveoli these three structures which you can see these three structure they are the one which are involved in the gaseous exchange they are the one which are involved in gaseous exchange. Right? Is it clear? Is it clear? Hope this structure is clear. Now, how does the alveoli look like? How it helps in the gaseous exchange? That we will be looking at. Just have some patience. Hope this topic is clear. The gaseous exchange. Now, I know you all must be thinking, ma'am, what about lungs? What are these lungs? Lungs. Till now, we haven't talked about lungs. We were just discussing about the bronchi, bronchioles and alveoli. We haven't talked about lungs. So lungs are what? So lungs are the bronchi, the bronchioles, one second, bronchiole and your alveoli. All of this, all of this, they constitute lungs. 
So if someone says lungs, they are involved in gaseous exchange. You being uh, a science student, you should know that whole lung doesn't involve in uh, gases exchange. There is only a part of it. That is your alveolar bronchioles. That is your alveolar duct. And the next one is the alveoli, which is involved in the gaseous exchange. So just imagine the situation. These structures, these structures, right? They are richly supplied with blood vessel. You can see blood vessels. They are going like this. They are richly supplied with blood vessel. And when they are richly supplied, so that means what will happen? They will be involved in the gaseous exchange. They will be involved in the gaseous exchange, richly supplied. So that is the reason. Gaseous exchange, that means ultimately it has to reach up to the uh, uh, blood. Clear? <coughs> now, let's talk about, so conducting a respiratory part is clear. Let's talk about further. Now let's talk about the alveoli. I would like to discuss with you how these alveoli look like. So this is how our alveoli look like. Now here you can see some gases, they come in and gases, they go out. Right? I'm labeling this as alveoli. Alveoli. What are these? Alveoli, which helps in the gaseous exchange. Now, you can't see the two layers are present. Right? Here, the one layer is the connective tissue layer, and another layer is a thin layer of, here, I'm labeling this as the squamous epithelium basically alveolar squamous epithelium then we have another layer of connective tissue connective tissue the next layer is this blood vessel layer, which is the endothelium. Endothelium. Right? And this endothelium is the blood vessel layer. And this is also the squamous epithelium. So all of these, all of this, they constitute what? The respiratory epithelium. Right? The diffusion membrane. diffusion membrane so if someone asks you that how many diffusion membrane are present you should know that there are three diffusion membranes are present what are their names you should guys know the names of these membrane they are what <coughs> right clear name of the alveolar squamous epithelium connective tissue and endothelium right they are made up of yellow elastic connective tissue. Clear? Alveolar. And they make the diffusion membrane very uh, thin. Because they are very thin, so the diffusion is very much possible. Now, <coughs> one thing you should remember. Now, the gases, they come in like this. Right? And this is how the blood goes. Right? So here the deoxygenated blood enters. Deoxygenated blood enter. Deoxygenated blood. And over to the side you will find oxygenated blood. Oxygenated blood. That means this particular blood is oxygenated now. That means it is rich in oxygen. Clear? Clear bodies? You should remember this is a blood vessel. 
So let's label this as a blood vessel. Now, deoxygenated blood from various tissues of the body, they reaches up to the right side of the heart from right ventricle, a pulmonary which uh, artery, right, right? A pulmonary artery arise which carries this deoxygenated blood, which is again oxygenated. Oxygenation will occur. Now the pulmonary vein it will go back into the left side of the heart from where once the pump will occur. they will supply the oxygenated blood to each and every body tissue we have we will be discussing the blood circulation that how does this blood circulation occurs in the another chapter which is a body fluid and the circulation so this is related to the diffusion membrane right alveolar squamous epithelium connective tissue and endothelium is there both of them they cons uh, uh, three of them they constitute the diffusion membrane so always remember the diffusion diffusion is directly proportional to the thickness of membrane more thickness of membrane less diffusion will occur so you can note that down also so that means diffusion of the gases is inversely proportional to the thickness of diffusion membrane thickness of diffusion membrane diffusion membrane clear now let's move further <coughs> now let's talk about the lungs lungs now we are deep going into the lungs <coughs> we have to discuss how our lungs look like externally but before talking about it i would like to discuss some another important facts regarding the lungs now the lungs you know that is present in a air tight chamber lungs is present in air tight chamber air tight chamber and you know what is the name of this chamber that is the thoracic chamber the name of this chamber is thoracic thoracic chamber now all of you must be wondering ma'am this is thoracic chamber what about the below one so below we have this abdominal chamber here we have is abdominal chamber abdominal chamber where the abdomen is present so the name is given as abdominal chamber now all you of you must be thinking ma'am or uh, why this bifurcation and how do we do that how can we say that till this point we have thoracic chamber and after this point we have thoracic chamber you should remember there is a structure a muscular structure which is termed as diaphragm and because of this diaphragm the thoracic chamber forms a air tight chamber so they form a air tight chamber so below uh, uh, this particular di diaphragm the abdominal chamber is there above diaphragm what do we have is the thoracical chamber till now hope it is clear now this chamber is completely surrounded right here this chamber is all about here in the front side they are we are having sternum now this structure you can see a sternum is there here you will find a sternum sternum is there back side we have vertebral column we are having a vertebral column now here on the lateral side the ribs are present ribs are present so just imagine itself is a chamber here sternum back side it is just imagine this right this is a sternum here at the back side the vertebral column is present and lateral side that is covered with the ribs so let's write this also so towards the dorsal side dorsal side what do we have on dorsal side the vertebral column the vertebral column on the ventral side ventral side we are having sternum right on the lateral side lateral side what do we have is the ribs 
and below lower side what do we have is the diaphragm the diaphragm so these are the structures present so diaphragm because of diaphragm only we have this air tight structure now to look at the lungs lungs is covered by two different layer right the outermost layer here the lung you can see so lung is covered with two different layer it is an outermost layer and there is inner layer two layers are there two layers so outer one is termed as parietal parietal pleura towards the inner side there is the inner visceral it is towards the organ so the name is visceral pleura so on an average a name is given as pleural membrane what do we call the pleural membrane so in between these pleural membrane you will find a fluid is present a fluid is present which is termed as the pleural fluid pleural fluid so basically it is having a pleural fluid and this pleural fluid they decreases the friction right it decreases the friction so that a friction should not occur so whenever the lungs they increase in the size or the decrease in the size it should not affect or it should not burst basically hope it is clear now if you can uh, clearly see the structure on the left lung <coughs> you will find a notch is present can you imagine which structure will be present over here any structure any vital structure which needs protection of ribs you know uh, just imagine what is that that is the heart so heart is present over here and this uh, uh, left side of the heart they are having cardiac notch so this is termed as the cardiac cardiac notch what do we find cardiac notch notch is there so this cardiac notch is a fold so that heart can easily fit into this structure clear clear buddies now <coughs> in the right one three lobes are present right upper lobe middle lobe and the lower lobe here only two lobes are there two lobes are there upper lobe and the lower lobe so just like that of another structure now this lung is also having various lobes so let's write whatever we have done so far because this is important right and i promise you guys that guys you have to make notes and simultaneously i am making some notes for you guys now the lungs so i told you the they are present in the thoracic uh, uh, cavity so two layers two layers are there and these layers they are termed as pleura pleura right a common name is pleura one is having the outer layer outer parietal parietal pleura and second one is visceral pleura right now the next point left lung has two lobes right the uh, upper one and the lower one upper and lower whereas when we talk about the right lung 
right lung has three lobes three lobes upper middle and lower and lower so these are the lobes present and these lobes are because of the fissure which is present in them a fissure is there which divides it into various lobes clear lung is clear so two layers they are done clear so they basically helps in the protection part and below you can see a diaphragm structure is present now let's talk about the structure which is the diaphragm diaphragm is having some muscles which we will be discussing so the muscles which are present in the diaphragm they are termed as phrenic muscles so they are made up of some muscles so the muscles name is phrenic muscles phrenic muscles right in a normal normal shape it is it is like this it is dome shaped right in a normal condition in a relaxed stage it is a dome shaped like this relaxed stage whereas when it is in contracted state when phrenic muscles they are contracted it will become straight see it is like that of uh, everyone when we are relaxed we are like this and when uh, when someone uh, when our parents scold you or whenever there is uh, some kind of pressure on us we become straight so this is how you can remember clear so this is their normal shape dome shape that is their relaxed stage otherwise their shape will be straight they will come down so where when does it occur it occurs during the process of inspiration and expiration in the inspiration and expiration you will see the changes are there these changes in the shape of the uh, diaphragm basically affects the volume of thoracic cavity and once the volume of thoracic cavity is affected so that means there is change in the pressure when pressure changes so the exchange that, that, that means the gases will come in or the gases will go out clear now let's find out this uh, session over here clear so in the next session next session uh, i was supposed to do some question but it's okay we'll do that in the next session so let's find out over here see you in the next class we'll start with some questions related to this topic and then we will proceed towards the inspiration the expiration process and then we'll be discussing the gases exchange so take care guys and some volumes also the volumes and the capacities so take care see you in the next class bye bye everyone um keep watching be regular in the classes and do not you should not be like when the classes are there we'll watch it later on see yes you have these access these are the free classes which are there on the youtube which you can take an advantage of it but it should be like you have to watch on the same day if you'll watch on the same day you are going to make this regular it is going to help you a lot otherwise there will be lots of backlogs because you are not you don't have to only complete a one chapter or a one subject you have three or four subjects it depends if you are having mathematics also three and the four subjects so be regular take care guys see you in the next class bye bye have a nice day